All right, so so far we saw a diagram, diagram representation of relation functions and we looked at them as ordered pairs. Now the next important concept when we talk about relations and functions is something called domain and ranges. So I copied our function here. Um, so again, there are many equivalent definitions of domain and ranges. We're going to start with the most basic one. So we, we, we say that in the ordered pair, domain is the set of all first entries. And the range is the set of all second entries. Okay, so very um, simple definition, right? So let's say this is F and I call this G. So in F, the domain is, if I look at the first entries, that's A, B, and C. The range is the second one, which is 2, 1, 3. In case of G, the domain is 1, 3, 2. Now, we're not going to list one, two times because it, it's a set, it's a collection. So the copies of objects are, are not considered to be distinct. And the range here is going to be A, B, and C. Okay, now the interesting thing to note here is if I, if I redraw these functions as diagrams, then what are these domains and ranges exactly um, let's do the other one um, one two three four one let's say I call this another function h so the first one essentially um, the mappings were a to 2 b to 1 and c to 3 and the domain is a b and c which is all the things in the set X from where you have a line coming out and the range is all the things in the set Y where you have a line. Whereas if I take this example here, um, the domain is going to be just 1 and 3 and the range is going to be just A and C. Why? Because 2 and 4 don't have any lines coming out of them and similarly B and D don't have any lines coming into them. So why is this useful? It's because talking about domain and range gives us a very good idea of what this relationship sort of looks like. You know, it tells us what are the things that have lines from the left and what are the things that have lines to them on the right. So it's a very important concept. So, so far, we this is a very abstract um, definition and treatment of functions and relations. Um, we're we're going to move from this abstraction to a more algebraic and expression-based function that you may be more familiar with. So the next idea is that of functions as machines. So we have our setup to talk about functions in this manner. Uh, we, it's very customary to denote functions by small letters, f, g, h, etc. Now, the mapping idea that we had so far and this ordering of pairs, you know, you have an X and a Y, and it depends which one you write first. It creates this, um, this sort of necessity or this, um, this idea that, that, that makes it easier to understand of there being an input. Yeah, so this stands for input and there being an output. So in some sense, that's what the function is. It, it behaves like a machine, meaning you you do something and then it does something for you. So there's an input and there's an output. Now, there may be multiple ways in which you um, encode this instruction, right? So for example, let's say I make a very simple function, which is basically just an instruction or a machine that does something for you. And it says add one. So if I throw in a zero to it, it's gonna give me a one. If I throw a negative one, it's going to give me zero, etc. 
throw in three, it's gonna give me four. If I throw in pi, it's gonna give me pi plus one. If I throw in cat, it's gonna give me cat plus one. So it doesn't doesn't really care, right? So what it really does is it, it, it takes some input and it throws out some output. Now, if you compare it to what we have seen before, if I just make this circle on the left and this circle on the right, right, then these are just maps between sets. What does that mean? Which one is the domain? Then these are exactly the domains. And these are exactly the ranges which means that now we have another definition for domains, which is the set of valid inputs. In this new formulation of what a function means, now domains represent set of valid inputs and ranges represent the set of associated outputs. Okay. Now you, you can pause here for a minute and convince yourself that these definitions are equivalent, meaning um, calling domains a set of valid inputs and the first entries in terms of maps written as sets is the same as um, basically the range being the second entry or the set of second entry. So that's a, a representation. Now instead of having to always make these circles and writing the numbers in there, um, a more concise way of representing the same information is using a table. So let's take, for example, the add one function. I can set up values for input and have values of the corresponding output. Right, for example, let's say I pick my inputs to be negative five um, negative 3, 0, 2, 7, then I know that the output is just going to be negative 4, negative 2, 1, 3, and 8. Why? Because the function is just adding 1 to it. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause here before for this video. And then in the next video, we're going to look at yet another way in which we can view a function. Okay, so as an abstraction, what we went from is maps between sets to an input-output relationship between objects. And then if we further limit these objects to be numbers, we can construct them as tables of values. Yeah. And then finally, in the next video, which we are going to look at, since these are just tables of values, these values can be put into a system called a coordinate plane and they can be viewed graphically. Okay, that's going to be the um, goal in the next video.